Welcome back to the crown jewel of the World Poker Tour, the WPT World Championship, coming to you from Bellagio in Las Vegas. Oh, well, Mike, it is all coming down. These three players going after this title. This is exciting right now. Well, no question about it, Vince. This is the tournament that all poker players want to win. Who's it going to be? Let's get back down to the table and find out. It's on our chip leader, Hassan. This time he looks down at a mid-pair pair of sixes wired. He just limps in on the button with two sixes. A little surprising. Right behind him, Tuan Lee with an eight-six in his hand. Money already invested. Now Tuan's going to call out of the small blind. And Paul Maxfield with jack seven of spades going to wrap the table as well. He says, give us a flop. So here we go, a family pot. All three players in action. Wow, flop is 10, 9, 8. Paul Maxfield has flopped a straight. Twan checks. Well, they all three check on the flop here. Here comes the turn card. Paul wants a trap, it looks like. Well, a queen comes off. Twan checks. And let's see if Paul comes out of Sherwood Forest here. Yep, he bets 300,000 with his straight. Wow. Now, Hassan saying to himself, you know, if he had a jack, wouldn't he have bet on the flop there? I don't believe him. He's going to raise it. I'm going to bet 900000 here and test the water. Tuan quickly going out. Back on Paul, who's been trapping here. Well, he just makes the call here. So the river card coming up. The Englishman in a great place right now. Now the ace of diamonds comes on the river, making a potential flush out there. Well, there's higher straights. There's the flush, and Paul is going to check it. Well, he is walking the dog big time here, Vince. Just checking it to these guys and letting them bet themselves broke. Will Hassan slow down? He's betting $2 million here, Vince. Just a gigantic bet into Paul. He's saying, go away, my friend. Go back across the pond, please. What Paul is thinking here is, did the guy have a king jack? Did he make a straight on the turn? Wouldn't he have raised with a king jack before the flop? Did he make a diamond flush here? And his son goes back to a 99 cent fan. Tries to keep cool. He's actually posing like he's very comfortable. We know otherwise. Now, this is what poker's all about, making correct decisions. I think you have to make this call if you have a straight fence. If you made a diamond flush, good luck to him. It's a big bet to do this one. It's a big pot. <laughs> <laughs> big, pot. <laughs> big pot deserves a big bet, right? Yeah. And Hassan's going to yeah. yap it up here. Well, Hassan will be better off dummying up, I think, in this spot. And Paul's trying to figure out right now, did he make a diamond flush? I would be shocked if he laid down this straight fence. Well, but this would be one of the great displays of bowling at the poker table. If he could push Paul out. This is the same guy that dropped aces and eights early on. Ah, cool. And he's making the right call. We got it. Small pair. Small pair of sixes. That's good. That's good. His son just devastated. Well, there you go. Paul stands up. <laughs> Well, that's Marcel Lusk, whose hand he's shaking there. Marcel, former Tournament Player of the Year in Europe on several occasions. And folks, with that pot, we have a new chip leader at the table. It's the amateur Paul Maxfield from England. Paul Maxfield hasn't played many U.S. poker tournaments, but after tonight, he may be showing up a lot more. Okay, all in. Yes! Get in there! Yeah, I come to the United States twice a year to play poker. Paul Maxfield may look like a hard, stone-faced pro, but on the inside, he's just a soft-spoken Englishman. I'm from Stoke-on-Trent in England, and I have an engineering company. Poker's my hobby. This is the largest event I've played. Yes! This week, Paul took his hobby to a whole new level, and will never forget the hand that got him to the final table. Well, you know, I bluffed John Thumb. I moved all in for 1.2 million, and he took for ever to call. And I sat at the table with the sunglasses on, and I could feel a bead of sweat coming down my arm here. And you know when you're on the TV, like a droplet explodes? It dropped on the table. I thought, oh, the whole room's heard this. He's definitely going to call me now. <laughs> 
So anyway, he passed the hand, and then I just couldn't play another hand after that. I was, <laughs> I was exhausted. <laughs> $1,000 satellite got him into this event, and right now, he has the potential of winning $2.8 million. With that, the antes and blinds going up again. $40,000 antes and the ridiculous $200,000 and $400,000 blinds. We have an amateur from England up against a WPT champion and the guy who finished runner-up in this tournament last year. What an amazing event we've got going on here at Bellagio. Back to the table. It's on Twombly. He's got Queen Jack in his hand. Oh, He's going all in with it. He has about two million in chips. He's shoved him out there. Now Paul Maxfield right behind him with King Eight of Spades. No, well, he's going to go out. Well, Hassan Abib has King Jack of Clubs here. Count on, please. Oh, now the strong starting hand, especially three-handed. He's got four hundred thousand in the pot, Vince. There's nearly 2.7 million out there. It's going to cost him a million and a half more to call. So he's not quite getting two to one odds on his money, but almost. You just can't imagine he could lay this down with his kind of chip count. Even if he'd lose this pot fence, he'd have over nine million in chips. If he should make this call, he would be a big favor to take Tuan Lee out of this event. Vince, you have to suspect that Tuan might be making a move here. He's desperate. He's on the short stack. Both the other two players have a large amount of chips. He's trying to get back in the hunt, pick up some blinds and antes. You hate to double up a WPT champion, but Vince, at some point, you got to try to take him out. I should call you, man. Well, at least I know I have the best hand. Well, Hassan shows him the King wow. Jacker clubs. That wow. means his hand is dead. Tuan Lee is going to win this pot. I should have called you. Well, that is absolutely accurate. He should have called it. Have you beat? Yeah, me beat. Huh? Yeah, me beat. Vince, in my view, that's back to back mistakes by Hassan Abib. I had two live ones. Even if your opponent has ace 10 there, you're only a 3 to 2 underdog to win that pot. You could have the best hand. You could be up against a pair. You've got 400,000 in the blind. You're getting almost two to one odds on your money. In my view, Hassan B made a mistake by laying that hand down. You're watching the $11.5 million WPT World Championship, the most prestigious poker tournament in the world. Don't go away. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. You're watching the WPT World Championship. And the man that came in second in this event last year, Hassan Habib, in pretty good control here, has about $11 million. Well, he has the chip lead, but a little slip, in my view, on the last two hands, the way he's played them. But as you said, he's still the favorite here. No question about that. Back to the table on Hassan. Drink in hand, 8-7 in the other. Now Hassan going to limp in for 400000 Twan going out with Jack Deuce. Now around to Paul Maxfield. He's got the Queen Jack and the big blind. He says, give us a flop. Nothing fancy. Here come the first three. Now flop is King Eight Deuce with two hearts. Hassan has picked up a piece of that, the pair of eights. Paul checks, and Hassan quickly checks the two eights. He's tired of getting check raised by this guy. The nine of spade comes on the turn. That puts two spades and two hearts on the board. Paul checks. And Hassan bets 400,000, the minimum bet, the size of the big blind. Now, Paul has a gut shot straight draw, meaning a 10 would give him a straight here. Hassan's getting annoyed with this guy from England. Paul just wondering what's going on. The guy didn't raise before the flop. He didn't bet on the flop. All of a sudden, a 9 comes out there and he bets. Raises. He's not just going to bet. He's going to check and raise him. He did, Vance. A check raise of a million dollars. Hassan just tired of being his victim. Hassan is going to call him with the two eights. He doesn't believe him so far. Well, maybe he's putting him on some kind of draw, whether it be a flush or a straight draw. Thinks his two eights are good, makes the call. Here comes the river card. River card. Well, it's the ace of spades that comes off. Action's on Paul. Can he pull the trigger again? Check. Well, he's going to check it. Okay. Hassan quickly checks behind him. Hassan's going to win this pot with two eights.
Well, you just wonder, had Paul continued to pull the trigger and fired one more shell at the river, it would have been very difficult for Hassan to call with two eights there. But as it was, he made a tough call on the turn, and he picks up the pot to lengthen his chip lead. Hassan Habib placed second in last year's championship. This time, he wants to do just a little bit better. I'm not asking for too much. I just want to finish one spot better than last year. You know? Hassan has played poker professionally for 15 years. And over that time, he's developed a powerful reputation. Ray's just call, man. Hassan Habib is a very talented tournament player, especially for the bigger events. But Hassan's fans are not limited to just poker players. The name Hassan Habib has oddly become a catchphrase to the outside world. A bunch of people are yelling Hassan Habib now. They hit a jackpot. I hear people like yell Hassan Habib on golf courses. Hassan Habib! I don't know why they do that. I don't mind. Makes you kind of feel good, you know. So whether you're a fan of Hassan's poker abilities or just his name, Hassan Habib greatly appreciates your support. I really appreciate everybody that rules for me. I think that really keeps me going. Without that, I cannot make it. Well, could anyone stop Hassan Habib? He's still a massive chip leader. He's in the place he wants to be in. Can it continue? This time he looks down at the six-deuce offsuit. Even Hassan won't play that hand. Twan lead with king nine. Come on. And he's going all in with it. Well, he knows the king high is favored over a random hand. He moves all in here. Going to force his opponent to pick up a big hand to beat him. Back on the Englishman, Paul Maxfield. This time he has jack ten. How much is this? Paul's in for 400,000 already. Is it worth him putting up another 1.7 million dollars to compete? Well, that's what it's going to cost him to call. There's 2.7 million in the pot right now, though. But the question is, why would you want to gamble at this point? You're only invested 400. Give the guy the benefit of the doubt and go away and come back another day. Maybe he thinks he's got to gamble with these two superstar players. He's not going to outplay him. Why not take a shot right here with a Jack-10? Maybe that's what he's thinking. Well, this guy's outplayed them before tonight. He's made some beautiful, deceptive plays. Okay, cool. Well, he's doing it, Vance. He is gambling with the Jack-10. It's 40,000 around. Well, mathematically, Paul Maxfield has made the correct call here. He's getting a bigger price on his money than the odds are against him in winning this pot. Tuan Lee just loving this action. He's saying, I'm a nice size favorite. Got my money all in. So it's King 9 for Tuan Lee, Jack 10 for Paul Maxfield. Can Paul continue to get lucky? If so, that'll be it for our WPT champion, Tuan Lee. Here comes the flop. It's come 9 4 3. It's a sheet of paper. That's like a sheet of paper. Juan's hit the top pair, a pair of nines on the flop. So right now, Paul needs a jack or a ten or two running cars to make a straight. He just can't stand to watch. 4.3 million in this pot. Here comes a turn card. It's an ace. So once again, we're down to the river card. And the last time, Paul Maxfield hit lightning in the jar to stay alive in this tournament. If he does so once again, he knocks Twan Lee out. If not, Twan Lee will double up and be right in the thick of things in this three-way match. the board. Paul back turned. Well, there it is. A three comes off at the river. Twan Lee has done it. The crowd cheers. He is a very popular player, Vince. He's an action player. That's why fans like him. He's a good sport. He doesn't whine when he gets beat. He doubles up right here to stay alive. Yeah, but you got to question that call by Paul. One thing to push the man all in with Jack-10, another thing to call it. Does not pay off for him. Is that the first misstep there for the Englishman? He was just looking to gamble, Vince. Was hoping he could get lucky and win the pot. Unfortunately for him, he didn't. You know, Mike, it is just straightforward power poker here at the WPT World Championship. Well, stick around and let's see who gets knocked off the felt next. Don't go away. Yeah. I think I'm an adrenaline junkie. I saw one play made with 8-3. Now he's got kings. He's re-raised.